Hello guys, so I'm doing another makeup look. As you can see, I got one eye done, and I just want to show you the process of what I'm going to do. I've been trying to stick to using one palette, but today I had to use two because of the shimmer on top. So we're going to start with the James Charles palette. Oops, opening it up. And we're going to start with that dark green. I do not have the names anymore, so sorry in advance. Uh, I just didn't want it anywhere. Well, that, yeah. So we're going to take a brush, and I have a little mini compact mirror, and I'm going to start doing this in circular motions. Well, right now we're just... Actually, I really like this look. Pretty happy with it. I swear, I've been... You know, I've been getting decent, and I think my skills are, you know, getting better as I move along in the makeup world. So today wasn't my day, so, you know, I decided to just relax and do some makeup, because that always makes me feel better. You know, I hate those days where you feel like absolute dog shit, and, you know, a lot of people don't understand why women or men wear makeup, but it's more of an expressive thing, at least for me. I mean, I do think I look beautiful too, but, you know, when I'm down or upset, I'm able to express myself on my face, and that is always cool. Um, for some reason, though, this look was, like, in my mind, like, yesterday, and I was like, kind of want to do emerald like Emerald City from The Wizard of Oz. So, you know, there is some blue in here, but I don't want to do black because I feel like that would be too dark and I'm not trying to make it look, you know, dark. I've also been thinking about doing like a Halloween series where I take horror films and like base my makeup on some of those characters. I haven't decided, I'm not sure. You know, I still ha I kind of stopped my Disney series for a little bit because there's just so many characters that I put down. Okay, so now I'm gonna use this brush and we're gonna go into the light green next to it and we're just gonna circle it up because I don't want it to be, you know, too green if that makes sense or like I, d I just want it to like blend nicely I was going to do yellow but I really wanted to stick to that green theme so I don't know if you can see that it's you know appearing I see it I think you guys can see it too but like I said before you know it's really an expressive thing, and I know I'm not, like, a big-time makeup artist, but, you know, I started when I was in sixth grade. There was this girl that told me that if I wore makeup, maybe I'd have someone, some guy would like me, and through all of my years of school, even some in high school, uh, I had been bullied. I never really understood because I felt like I had a heart of gold, like, you know, I was like a tomboy and, you know, I liked to do the sporty things and I liked being around guys because they don't necessarily, like, you know, care, like, it was never like that. I'm gonna go back into the green. So... I started in 6th grade, and uh, there was a family situation, and I ended up getting put with my grandparents uh, for a little bit, and um, they didn't like that I wore makeup, so they would, my grandfather, he, I remember we went to the dollar store and I snuck some like red lipstick and I wore it one day, and he found it and got rid of it, <laughs> you know, that, that's, uh, 
that's that. Of course I forgot my concealer to cut my 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 stuff that's annoying I'm just gonna put another layer of that light green uh, so I'm gonna have to get up it's gonna make the video look wonky but as I was saying you know it's always been an expressive thing during middle school I would do darker looks so it was always black purple dark blue I never did anything other than that you know and for the longest time I was bullied and then 7th grade guys started to take interest in me and I was like, wow, maybe I'm doing this right. I never felt beautiful like when you have someone tell you that if you wear makeup, you might look, you know, you might get someone's attention. And you hear that once and you think things and all of that. So I'm now going to go into that dark blue and we're going to put it here on the edge and we're going to blend it up. But, you know, now it's more of a creative thing, and it does help me release um, some emotions. I've had probably the worst summer of my life, um, and I don't wish it on anybody, of what I, I, I went through. Um, you know, I learned a lot, but I'm also still, like, healing and hurting and I feel like I'm not fully there and when I pick up a brush I'm just I don't know I'm just me and I can release those emotions on my face and it's the coolest experience and like I said I don't think I'm bad at it like I've had a lot of practice like my middle school makeup oh god I wish I had help um, so I'm just gonna make the, like, cover it with the green just to make sure that it's all blended and it looks nice. But, you know, you live and you learn. Um, I don't think I regret anything because if I didn't start that young, I'd be still learning. And makeup truly is an art. It takes forever to get to a certain skill set. And I don't, like I said, I don't want to say I'm the greatest makeup art artist, but I do think I'm good at it, and I like doing it, you know? And my whole point of creating this channel was to put my makeup out there, but like I said, I had a really crappy summer, and it it's a release for me, you know? I can express myself through colors and palettes and all of that so we're done with this I need to cut my crease but I forgot my concealer at my desk area so I'm gonna have to go get it so I'm gonna take you guys with me Ugh, love that love that for me I look like booty nuts um let's see where is it oh it's right here I knew I should have like I try all the time to have my shiznit settled, but I never, there's always something, I swear. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting somewhere up close, that's what it looks like. We're now going to use the Wet n Wild concealer, and I'm going to cut my crease so we can put that beautiful green on there, and we're pretty much set. Yeah, but that's pretty much my story on how I started makeup. And usually when I'm upset, I can, you know, just sit down and take some time to myself. And it's like an art form for me. You know, I can't draw or anything, but I can do this. And when I'm upset or something, I'm just, I'm able to say what I want to say on me. Today, more or less, like, I am upset because some junk happened. But 
I had this look planned out in my mind already. So it's like, you know, it's not really anything for that. I love, I love Megan. Um, I would post a full video of doing my makeup, but truthfully it takes me like four to three hours and I'm gonna explain why now. I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to my makeup, like I don't want it to look bad and I get really scared if there's like a line or something messed up and I'll take like 10 years to work on it or if I'm not satisfied with the look uh, I will either redo it or really take the time to fix it and clean it up um, uh, in middle school my makeup usually just took like an hour but I would still wake up early to to do it okay so we're now done with that and we're gonna go into the I got this palette by essence Oop. and we're gonna go into high honey which is that beautiful green and we're gonna put it on my lid um, I'm gonna use this but I also have this so when I get to the top I can put it there but yeah um, I thought for my channel that I could possibly talk about my story. I don't know if anyone would be interested, but you know, I have a pretty interesting story to say the least. I don't want to be like one of those people that is like, you know, I had the worst childhood, but if I were to create a timeline of my life, there would be a lot in it, and I'm only... 18 so you know for me to get back and bounce up and back on my feet it's just I guess different for me there's some things that I can't change and I don't have the ability to change because I was just born into that but, you know, it it's kind of like a learning pe thing for other people. Because, like I said, I was bullied a lot. And no one really heard my story and what I've been through. So, if I create a timeline, which I'll do right now. I was born January 4th of 2002. Um, my dad was in the picture then, um, but shortly after, he wasn't. Uh, we were supposed to move to Tennessee, believe it or not, and my mom went to the house to, like, pick everything up, and he basically just said it was over, and, you know, he took all the things, he took money, he didn't leave my mom with much. So... My grandparents took us in, and I'm so grateful for them. They gave us a little, they had a downstairs basement, and we lived down there for a few years. And then my grandfather helped my mom uh, get our first house, which was in a trailer park. Um, as a kid, you're like excited to have your own space and place, but at the same time, you know, people made fun of me because I lived in a trailer park but besides the point the house was beautiful and we lived there for a little bit of a time me and my mom do not have the best relationship we never really got along I kind of have a mouth and if I don't like something that's going on I'm definitely gonna tell you and I don't think she took that quality in a good way so, my mom dated someone uh, named Adam while we were at that house. Sweet guy. I really liked him, but it didn't work out between the two. Then we moved into the house that they're currently in now. 
and she met a man uh, named Carl, who I'm not particularly fond of at all. Um, since then, him being in our lives, CPS, Child Protective Services, was involved twice. Um, his son had done stuff to my sister, and my mom didn't say anything for a little bit until I opened my mouth, because it wasn't a safe place for my sister, and I absolutely love my sister, and I didn't want to, you know, my mom wasn't being a mom, so I had to be the mom. So, you know, that was something. Within this time, I was talking to a few guys, and I was doing this because I was trying to get their attention, my mom's attention. She never did. I never had a dad, so I always wanted that male presence to be like, hey, you're beautiful, you don't need to change. And I never got that, so when someone would call me beautiful, I was very gullible to it. And I got hurt multiple times. Um, uh, my sophomore year, I was sexually assaulted. And I know people are like, you know, where's the proof? Where's the proof? I had the proof. You know, I don't need to discuss much of what happened. But, you know, I went through that. And then my junior year, I was raped. And this is when I, you know, after that, I really had to think about, you know, what I deserved. Because I kept running into people that were either going to physically take advantage of me, emotionally take advantage of me. And I continued to think that that was what I was worth. And after I healed, because it was like a, like, it took me a year and I'm still healing from that. I have my moments where I'm triggered by things. But, you know, I had a different perspective and I stayed single for about a year and a half until I met Andrew. Um, he kind of, you know, saved me from where I was, but, you know, we have our ups and downs and... Sometimes it's hard for me because I'm so used to being treated like shit. And when someone doesn't treat me like shit, it's like, wow, how do I deal with that? And he has been very good with me. But at the same time, you know, I feel like he needs some, there needs to be some learning there. But, you know, I don't blame him. And, you know, I was excited to leave. We moved out. Um, in April, I found out I was pregnant. And me and him were super excited. I was able to create this new life. And at my 12-week scan, I found out that I miscarried. Which, uh, I think that next to being raped was probably the worst pain I've ever been through. Losing your child is something I don't, I don't wish on anybody. Like, it's just the worst. You get so excited and pumped for this life, and, you know, it's just crazy. Uh, you know, and I'm still go doing that and going through that. That only happened in June. And it was, like I said, it was the worst. Uh, I had a missed miscarriage, so there was, like, really no signs. I still felt pregnant, but I did notice around seven weeks some of my symptoms, like my nausea, kind of stopped. And I feel like I should have listened to my gut. I feel like I knew something was up. Um, and that really sucks and hurts. Um... It's just crazy to me that I've been handed so many things and I still manage to get back up. You know, it's hard to talk about because, you know, not everyone understands and a lot of my family think it's thinks it's easy, but 
I also struggle with anxiety and since losing my baby, depression has been probably the worst I've ever had in my life. And I think it's solely because I lost something so great and dear to my heart. Um, I'm going to go back into this and go into that dark blue again. And like I said, if you've never lost a child, you don't necessarily understand the extent of the pain. And especially for the person physically going through it, it's probably the per the worst physical pain, too, that I've been through. I was, you know, I got to see a lot, but I also lost a lot. I am thankful that I got to carry a life in me but the worst thing that I've ever heard was that there was no heartbeat and you know I had to tell Andrew and I had to do all this stuff I just felt really alone and I still do because you know no one gets it from my perspective no one understands I feel very let down because I continue to have to go through these ob obstacles and there's like no good that really comes out of it and that's really upsetting. And I'm not gonna cry but I'm really upset about it. Especially like when people are around you are like, you know, maybe this is a sign that you, you should just not do it right now but I don't think anyone understands realistically how it feels and all I want to do is continue to continue to try and see if I can get that but you know then I worry about other things if I'm not fertile now and you know all of this stuff and it just totally breaks me down and it's like what what for so part of me just wants to give up and just you know not worry about that right now. I have given up a lot. But I know that it's going to be hard around the holidays because my baby was supposed to be born December 20th. And, you know, that's hard to, to cope with. Like, to know that you're not going to have them. And you just kind of have to move on. It's really hard. And I just wish some people, like, I'm happy for all the people that do get pregnant. Like I said, I don't wish it on anybody, but I just wish there was more say for the people that lose their babies because there are a lot. It happens in one in four pregnancies, and I happen to be that. It was a chromosome thing. I didn't do anything. You know, it just wasn't going to work out from the very beginning. Anyway, I'm going to put highlight on my top. This is Revolution. And I'll continue to talk. But, yeah, my summer hasn't been the best. And it's been a lot of me trying to cope with it. Because, you know, it's just such a special moment to find out. And then I noticed that I take a lot of pregnancy tests because I want it so bad. And I'm just let down by every negative. This is stuff I haven't really shared with anybody. Just like this hope. And I don't know if I can keep this hope up. If that makes sense. Because you, you have so many things happen in your life. And then literally nothing good happens from it. But, you know, you live, you learn. All I can hope is that this was for a reason. That's all I can hope for. This was a long ranting video, I guess, but you know, I hope someone listens to it and maybe I could could help them some way. But this makeup look, on the other hand, kind of looking spicy. Okay, let me just put a little bit more on there. And I'm just gonna go, 
Okay. Okay, guys. So this is what my makeup looks like. It kind of gives me peacock vibes. I just realized that. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe in another video I can go more in depth into spe specific things that I've been through in my life. You know, all of it is healing and if I can talk about it and then someone else, you know, understand or feel better about what's going on with them, then I'd be doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But I hope everyone has a great day and you know, live it up and be happy. Bye, guys.